In today's video, we're gonna be breaking down our mobile studio setup, the gear we brought to shoot those interviews in the hotels, the tent, the apartments for heading east, like up here if you haven't watched a series, and then how we analyze those spaces to shoot those interviews. So let's talk about the kit real quick. We covered this in our What's in Our Camera Bag Heading East Edition, which I'll link up here if you haven't seen it, where we break down all of the gear we brought to shoot the series. In our mobile studio kit, we brought the Aperture Amaran P60X, which they sent us. Thank you, Aperture. The pop-out softbox that comes with that light. We brought the world's smallest light stand. We brought the Rode Wireless Go 2. Thank you, Rode, for sending us those with lapel mics. We also had two Sony NPF batteries. We didn't actually mention this in the camera bag video, but we had the Aperture M9 in the bag as well. Everything will be linked in the blog post, which will be in the description box on our website, beckyandchris.com slash blog. You should know by now we post lots of articles on our website. It's the challenge when you walk into a space that you've never seen before and you have like an hour to basically do an entire interview set, light it, mic it, remember what you've done all day. Right. And then think about what the video is going to be, even though you don't really have a plan for the video because you don't really know what's happening because you can only plan helicopter videos so much. So we're going to look at four of our favorite interview lighting setups from Heading East, starting with the cabin. In this instance, the cabin we were in was probably... I don't know, I would guess probably about 100, 120 square feet maybe. It was an oblong shape, like a rectangle. So really you could only shoot in one direction down the cabin. There was basically one angle. Now with the cabin shot, we were able to kind of get two separate shots. The first one of Chris, we kind of shifted him off to the side so you could see the ladder behind him. And then for me, I kind of sat in front of the table in the room there, which was in front of the bed. So the shots were different enough that when we were cutting between the two shots, it wasn't so awkward. And also the lighting is a little bit different between the two of us. Kind of in classically in photography, people will say that you can use harsher light sources for males, and but you want more soft, flattering light sources for females. And I guess that's kind of a bit sexist nowadays. For you, we went with a more contrasty light. It was a single light source, basically from above, light lit from above, a little bit to camera right, and it's casting very harsh shadows. For my shot, the light was kind of above me shooting down and we almost did like a clamshell scenario because we took some tinfoil out of the drawer and laid it on the table and that was acting as a reflector right. so the light was above me here and that was reflecting off the reflector or the tinfoil and <laughs> that gave that nice clamshell flattering light source the background was pretty dark and the lantern that was in the back the little lamp that was inside the cabin was an LED lantern that was flickering on cameras. We took the Aperture M9 little light and kind of just stuffed it behind to fake that light. And for that shot, we used the 24 millimeter lens on the A7S III. Because the space is so small, we wanted that shallow depth of field fall off quickly. Right. Shooting with a wide lens and shooting at a wide open aperture allows us to get a little bit more separation from the background in a smaller space. The second shot we're gonna look at is the shot in the apartment. This was in Portsmouth. We stole this piece of tin foil from the last stay, and this is our reflector. Makes a difference. Yeah, it makes a real big difference. So this is with the reflector. This is without it. We analyzed the room when we walked in. We knew we were going to be shooting at night because it was going to be the end of the day. So we picked the corner of a couch. There was an end table with a lamp, and there was a plant in the background, a piece of art on the wall. So. I moved the table out a little bit so that that lamp was kind of off our right shoulder. Thankfully that the light that was inside the lamp was just like a halogen light bulb, so it did not flicker on camera. So we were able to use the practical light in the room as a second light source. And again, we just use that single point light source. We use the reflector again. This shot we shot with 50 millimeters. The light bulb in the lamp was fine. It didn't flicker on camera. If it did, we could have hid the aperture M9 in the light again, like we did for the lantern in the cabin. We have a variable color temperature adjustable light. So we were able to actually match the color temperature to the tungsten balance of the light bulb that's in the lamp. And that gave sort of a, a nice uniform white balance for the whole shot. All right, a little BTS here. We have the Aperture P60X with the collapsible softbox. I have it matched to the outdoor windows here for using this and this as some supplemental light. We turn this off. So this is what the ambient light looked like. So you kind of get some side lighting going on. And then we turned on these practicals in the back, which are just built-in tungsten balance lights. We needed to get, we needed to have brought a bigger light stand. So the hotel we stayed in in York, Maine, that was another pretty tight area from a square footage standpoint. So it was basically a bed and a side table. For that, we kind of liked the idea of having those two lights on the wall. It kind of had a very nautical theme. Mm -hmm. So we basically put the subject 
on the end of the bed, really close to the 24 millimeter lens, again, to get that separation because we didn't have enough, a lot of room. And then I think we did shoot at 1.4. As far as the light was concerned, this is an instance where we did have different color temperatures for the wall light and the key light. There's sort of two different reasons we did this. One is we kind of felt it was a little bit homey with the, with the lights on the wall, kind of an you know, amber glow, but mainly is because there was a lot of natural light spilling in through two opposing windows coming from this, our side, sort of like our, our cheeks, which gave kind of a cool uh, light scheme all of its own, it was, but it was very dramatic. So basically we used the camera and light panel as a fill almost. It was technically a key light, but it kind of filled in all the shadows that would have been otherwise there if we just relied on, mat on natural window light. If we matched the light panel to the background lights, we would have had some really weird mixing of color temperatures on your face. And that generally doesn't look good. I try not to mix color temperatures on one subject, unless it's something from coming from behind or in the background. We made sure that we turned off all of the ceiling lights and just used the light panel and then added the lamps that were in the room as practical lights if they add to the shot. But only if they add to the shot. Sitting on the edge of the bed was kind of like the only shot. And so we both did our shots there. And the last one we want to talk about is the tent shot. The coolest part about the P60X is that they can take NPF batteries, Sony NPF batteries. So we were off grid at that tent. So we didn't have power. So we were able to power the light with these batteries, which was really great because we were shooting our debriefs inside the tent during the day. So there was a lot of light, but there were shadows on our face. So we were able to add like a fill light inside the tent, which made that shot look even more dynamic because we were able to balance the exposure with what was happening outside the tent. Barely, barely. barely. It was very sunny out there. Yeah. Before we popped the light on, our faces were more or less in the shadows. That tent was a white canvas tent. So the whole thing acted like you were inside a giant softbox. It allowed for a naturally diffuse sort of just generally illuminated atmosphere. But looking out the door of the tent, it was super bright. What we tried to do in that instance was try to get as close to the outdoor lighting as possible. But even if you look in that shot, the outdoor scene is still probably a couple stops higher in exposure than the indoor scene slash our faces. But that's okay because the second factor I think that contributed to that shot working out was that the dynamic range on the a7s3 is really good so we were able to still capture and preserve some of those details albeit it's brighter still we didn't get like total clippage of the signal or anything like that while the light stand was compact we thought it'd be perfect for this application it didn't go high enough to be like like a normal light stand and time and time again we found ourselves like trying to prop and balance it up on weird sketchy little setups in the tent our only option was to put it on top of the wood stove and it was super sketchy if i had my time back i'd bring a slightly larger light stand that could go high enough could you have got an adapter and just put another brought another tripod we're gonna have to mess around with that a little bit yeah. for the next time for sure and again in the tent we were shooting with the 24 millimeter lens it was very tight in there we had one spot that we could shoot and it was kind of like around the corner so we needed it to be wide and we wanted that fall off we didn't want total depth of field right we probably have six minutes left on this battery so let's do this quick we're like oh no if we make it through one interview and then run out of batteries for the second one the right. shot's not going to be consistent there's no way to charge it so we had to be quick so it kind of worked out this like mobile little setup we have i think this will definitely be kind of a setup that we travel with more often have yourself a nice little setup where you can get a decent looking interview shot especially if you have a wide lens that shoots f1.4 or 2.8 as well the lapel mics that we used while they were a little bit crackly because they're old they worked well so we'll probably replace those with something at some point they're all sold out <laughs> the ones you wanted to get the ones that, the ones that donna recommended to me because he knows <laughs> i'm going to take what donna recommends he's the go. sound guy he's the sound guy and also a good friend of mine <laughs> shout out to donna check out his channel link up here thank you guys so much for watching if you haven't checked out heading east the full series is linked up here goodbye set actually there's one more video where we build the set which is ironically the last video it's the last video mm -hmm. Alrighty. all right goodbye Goodbye. goodbye we don't ever plug the podcast. Why don't you plug it while I pull up Bill note and get okay. my content for Check sure. out our podcast, Tuxedo Time, where we were tuxedos in a design podcast edition. It has a separate channel. We're we'll link it up here or down in the description box. Also, while Becky's looking, if you like the tuxedos that we're wearing here, we'll link in the description box where we got them from Cuts, who have been supporting this channel for the last couple of months. Thank you for that. You can get 15% off with our link. This video is not sponsored by Cuts, but we thought we'd plug them because we've been living in these tuxedos and they're fantastic. You find your content yet or what?